Okay guys, I'm here today with Gordon Ryan, Gary Tono, huge honor for me. Guys, today they will talk here about their training system. So you guys train seven days a week, right? Yeah. Yeah, I never, I mean like from throughout all my career, I always seen people training five days a week, six days a week, never saw anybody training seven days a week. How do you do that, Gordon? Well, first of all, it's easy with a guy like John, who uh, is there like literally every single day, three times a day for like the last 30 years, <laughs> every single day. He like, he like teaches, he looks flawless doing the moves. Then he like gets up and like can barely walk across the mat. And I'm like, well, if like this guy who like needs like a hip and knee replacement can be here like every day, then we should be able to be at least be here for the pro session. So um, that's, a, that's a big part of it. And um, you know, it, it it's a misconception that, you know, you go into the gym and every time you go into training, you are doing hard rounds, you're trying to win every round. Um, if you do that and you go, you, try with the best guys every single day and you try to win every single round uh it's it's, it's tough to keep up um so for me a lot of the a lot of the sessions are a lot lighter um if i feel tired i take it back and maybe i go with the best guys and i just work on defensive stuff where i let them put me in uh in submissions and i try to escape and maybe i get submitted maybe i get pinned whatever the case is maybe they win a round um but that's you know it's training who cares um, or maybe I go with the smaller guys and I go a little bit harder and I work on things that I'm trying to work on that I can't necessarily hit on the better guys yet. Um, so, you know, based around how tired I am and um, how beat up I am and, you know, what competitions are coming up, I'll, I'll manage the training schedule um, day to day how I feel. I don't have like one day where I take off, like a lot of people take off Saturday or Sunday or Wednesday. Um, I don't take one day specifically off because sometimes Sunday I feel great, sometimes you know, Saturday, right. I feel great. Right. Um, so I just, I manage the training every day um, per how I feel that day. Sometimes I get a good night's sleep. Sometimes I'm sleep deprived and I go harder and uh, harder or lighter uh, depending on how I'm feeling that day. Good. Yeah, you told me something earlier as well that was very interesting. Like some days you were forced to not train, right? Like when you had to solve something that you even mentioned like adult thing. Like, yeah. can you explain that? Because if that was a very interesting concept because I think everybody has a day or two during the week sometimes that they can't train because they gotta go solve this problem, solve that problem. And then they end up looking, losing like 20% of their week because they only train Monday to Friday. So how do you think about that? That was very interesting. Yeah, like I know I'm gonna have a rest day at some point, like, you know, once once every other week or once once a month. Like when I get back to Austin, I have to go register all my cars. Like I know oh, yeah. I'm gonna be sitting at DMV for hours and hours and hours and the chances of me missing a session are probably yeah. pretty high. Um, so like those are my rest days where I I'll go and work out in the morning and then I'll go to get my obligations done to like not, you know, lose my house or have to pay taxes and go to my accountant's oh, yeah. office or something like those are the days I know I'm going to rest. So I don't take, you know, one specific dedicated day to take a rest day. I just know that I'm going to have to do something as far as like adult res responsibilities that's going to cause me to miss training and I'll wait for those days and then I'll rest oh, on those days. Yeah, I love that because the way everybody trains is Monday to Friday. And then when something like that pops up, they lose like one day of five days. It's a lot. Yeah. Like, and then a lot of times, like you can't get anything done on the weekends. Everything's closed yep, on yep, the weekends. Yep, yep, yep. So then you don't train Saturday, you Sunday, and you don't yep. train Wednesday. So now you're yep. only training four days a yep. week. Like yep. I know hobbyists who train more than four days a week. Yep. Yep. So <laughs> it's uh, for me, it's not just one day. It's just whenever I have to do stuff where, okay, I have to miss training today because I have something to do, then I'll use that day to rest. Right. Well, Gary, I love to have you here because you, you train seven days a week as well, right? But you were trained very different than Gordon, right? Uh, Gordon was saying that you focus more on volume. Then can you explain, like, how is your training regimen? Um, yeah, I mean, I uh, I definitely have a few uh, more sessions just because I'm doing MMA now. So uh, it's tricky. Like, there's a lot of ground to cover in MMA. Um, there's so many different aspects of the sport um, that I have to, to be working on at any given time. So I can't just, like, do, like, a training session a day. Um, at the bare minimum, I'm kind of doing two sessions a day because um, I, I try to keep up with the jiu-jitsu as much as I can. But at the same time, uh, you know, I'm doing mixed martial arts as well. And I'm just trying, you know, I try to make that my main focus. And, you know, similar to what Gordon said, you know, you have injuries here and there. Um, you have, uh, you know, life obligations and stuff that pop up. And that's, that's what I found also is that almost always that stuff happens frequently enough where it's like, okay, that's my break is like the day that oh, yeah. I have to go do something. Um, but the other thing I'll say, you know, because a lot of people ask about this kind of stuff, because we talk about like injury prevention and people getting yep. hurt, and yep. you know, one of the one of our students, Swan, uh, actually came up to me the other day, and he goes, "Oh man, you know, like I, I'm feeling a little sore, or whatever, you know, this thing is hurt," and he goes, uh, 
he goes, you know, what should I do? Like, how should I do training? And I, and I, have, I think I have a pretty good rule of thumb for it. And it might seem obvious for some people, but I think a lot of people get a little confused about it because they're not sure, like, should I just sit out when I'm done, you know, when I'm hurt or whatever the case may be. And I think that the general idea is, is that you want to be able to recover, right? On yep. some level. Like yep. if you get hurt, you can't just stay hurt forever. Like yep. that doesn't work for you. Um, you certainly don't want it to get worse, right? So the idea is I'm going to train as much or in such a way in which this injury at the bare minimum is staying where it is, but hopefully is getting a little bit better each day. If I can't train, if I don't feel like I can find a way to train in a way where this injury is getting better while I'm, fi while I'm doing that training, then yeah, maybe it's time to sit out. But I will say that that's often rarely the case. I think most things are, are things that you could probably find some way to train around. Maybe you no longer do live training and you only do drilling or whatever. Man, I used to see stuff like that happen all the time. You know, guys would get like staff or whatever, or like you know, get an injury or something, and then like they just disappear from the gym. Like I'll see them for two weeks or whatever the case may be, and tell their staff and actually goes away. It's like, it's like, hey, dude, like nothing's stopping you from sitting on the bench and watching training. Like, what you don't think that's Which valuable? Which is still training, right? Yeah, yeah. it's no, still no. valuable. Like, yeah, I get it. It's not technically training, but like you're there. You're involved. You're mentally thinking about the martial art. Like, why not? You know, like, what the hell else you got to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the, no, it was great because I would ask you guys about yeah. injuries. So you, you already answered the injuries. And what about like you wing a tournament? Do you train next day or do you take a break? You, know, you just did a tournament. It was like nine matches, whatever. Eight mm -hmm. match, seven match. Maybe you did like division open class YouTube. Sure. You guys train next day or you take a one day break? How it works? I try to. It depends. You know, like I said, you know, if there's injuries that I really feel like need a day, okay, no problem. Then I maybe don't show up exactly the next day, the day after or something. Or maybe you arrive on like a flight that, you know, you haven't slept or something. Okay. Um, you know, but I try not to miss days for no reason. You know what I mean? If I can be there, I try to be there. You know, uh, I just recently got knocked unconscious. So, you know, maybe I don't show up the day that I got knocked unconscious, but. Wait, you know, wait one day <laughs> Yeah. No, oh, I got it. And, uh, <laughs> what about lifting? Where, where, where does lifting fit your schedule? Or you you lift your? I do my best to, to try to fit it in. You know, some day, some months, I'm more consistent with it. You know, if I make a habit out of it, I'm doing it all the time. Um, but like, you know, when it when you get a little hurt and you're like, oh man, maybe I'll lay off lifting for a couple of days. It's the same as jujitsu. You know, I try to relate that because obviously my job. So you lift every day? No, no. When when I'm consistent, I do, okay. but I'm not always consistent. Um, I look at it like jujitsu for a lot of people, like jujitsu for a lot of people, if they like miss a few days or like they have to miss a week or something or right. whatever the case may be because of something, they have a tough time coming back to jujitsu. Yep. Now that's never going to be me because this is my job. You right. know what I mean? Like right. I'm not going to have a tough time coming back to training for MMA or jujitsu because it's like, well, I, I fucking, I'm going to have to fight a guy in a cage at some point, you know, like I got to get back to training. Um, but the average, you know, recreational guy, maybe not so much. Now, lifting for me is almost like the recreational part of my training in a sense. Right, right. It's like, yeah, I fit it in when I can because to me it's not the crucial element of what I do. Um, so, yeah, man, I, like I try to make it a habit and, and when I do, like, you know, I'm on it and I try to I do it like a little bit every day. I prefer to do a little bit every day than to like do like a big lift and then have to take a couple days off. Big lift, take a, you know what I'm saying? I'd rather just do like, hey, I'll do three sets of bench press and then tomorrow I'll do three sets of deadlift or whatever. This way, it's just something that I can keep up consistently. It doesn't take a whole lot of time. I can squeeze it into the schedule super easy. What, I'm gonna work out 15 minutes? You know what I mean? That's nothing. So right, right. I'm already working out 87 times a day with the jiu-jitsu and the MMA. It's not like I need that much more, you know? Right. What about you? You you lift a lot, right? Yeah, yeah, so I try. <laughs> the lifting is actually what kills me because I do longer, harder sessions. So um, I can do jiu-jitsu all day and not be tired, but. I do sessions with her and it's just impossible. Um, right. So we have like, you know, hour, <laughs> hour to two hour long uh, sessions um, sometimes. And uh, I, I can't do that every day because I'm just so exhausted from doing that, that it detracts from being mentally and physically sharp for jujitsu. So I try to lift like three or four times a week. Um, and I usually, I go through cycles where sometimes I, I try, it's my, the best thing for me to wake up early and do it. So I have it out of the way and then I can just go to jujitsu and then come home at nighttime and be done. Uh, because I don't particularly like lifting. I like doing jiu-jitsu. I, I, like, I, I lift because I think it makes me perform better, but I don't enjoy it. Um, so when I come home from jiu-jitsu and I'm tired and then you know, I eat a nice big meal and I get home, I'm like, oh, now I gotta go lift. Um, so I go through cycles where sometimes I force myself to do it at nighttime and sometimes I wake up and I'm disciplined and do it early in the morning and get it out of the way. Um, but I do, I do uh, lift uh, quite often and I try to do Three to four times a week. Three, okay, four, three, five, four times. three, four times, five times maybe, depending on how I'm feeling. 
Um, and then, uh, you know, it depends as we go through camps, the intensity will, the intensity and the amount of times we train per week will, will change per whatever camp we're doing. Got it. And then last question, I talked a little bit about that with Gary earlier today. So you guys pretty much broke that parameter in Jiu Jitsu that before you guys, everybody used to say like, oh, in order to get good no gi, you got to train with gi. So question number one, do you train with gi ever if you do? How frequently? And question number two, what do you think about this whole, like you gotta, even in order to get good no gi, you gotta train for gi and then yeah. I think I know the answer, but. Yeah, so um, I actually trained only in the gi um, for like the first two and a half years of my training, um, but it was basically just training no gi with a gi on, like okay. plus yeah. like a bow and arrow um, from yeah. the back. Yeah. But yeah. I wouldn't really use grips effectively and I kind of just didn't really learn much. I would kind of just train with the gi on. Um, and then, after I won 2017 EDCC, I was going to start competing in the Gi. So I trained for like 10 months consistently with John in the Gi. And uh, I actually learned a lot from him um, training in the Gi after I got my black belt. And then, so I had about two and a half years, then maybe about a year, so three and a half years total of training in the Gi. And uh, I've been training for 11 years. So most of the time now has been spent training no Gi. Um, and I haven't trained in the Gi and consistently, at least in, you know, Three years almost now I'd say okay. um, and I think that uh, if you want to get good in the gi you should train in the gi and if you want to get good in no gi you should train no gi I don't... And, and if you would start jiu jitsu again you would start gi or no gi even knowing that your career would be all no gi so you would start with no gi or you would still have started with gi? Um, if I was planning to specialize in the gi uh, without the gi or with the gi I would start training in the gi if I was going to look to specialize in the gi or if I was right, looking to right. specialize in no gi I would start no gi um, the only reason why I really trained, I didn't really have a preference when I first started. I didn't really know the difference between the two. Um, but it was, you know, 2010. So everyone pretty much was training in the gi oh, back yeah, then. Oh, yeah. um, 2010, 2011. So everyone, uh, pretty much all the training sessions were always in the gi. Yep. Because no gi was a lot less popular back then. Yep. Um, so I just, I trained in the gi. And then, you know, then we started going to Henzo's. And there was a big MMA culture. And then we met Eddie Cummings. And, you know, Eddie was only training no gi. So... Then we started to transition to nogi, and we had more nogi partners, and then we kind of just got roped into doing nogi. Yeah, no, no, that's amazing. Any other question that I missed it here? Like about training overall? I think, I think, like, uh, I think that pretty much hit it. Yeah, no, that's amazing. Yeah, so guys, I hope you guys enjoyed, and make sure to check out like uh, all Gordon's and Gary's instructions on BGG Fanatics. I think you guys might have watched it already, but it's the best out there for, especially for nogi. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed us. Please help me out to grow my YouTube channel, just click subscribe. And to watch more videos, just click under see more videos. I hope you enjoyed. BJJFanatics.com. Use the promo code YouTubeFaria to get 10% off any instructional video. Improve your jujitsu faster.